Live from Baton Rouge in the Maravich Center, welcome to College Basketball on the SEC Network. And we start off this Sunday with what should be a good one. Number four, South Carolina, super talented as always, expertly coached, taking on the Tigers of LSU, playing their best basketball of the season so far and looking for what would be a huge upset. South Carolina at 11-1, taking on LSU, coming off a big win at Missouri on Thursday night, 66-64. Looking forward to this one. Hi, everybody. I'm Paul Sunderland out in Southern California. Andrea Carter, former star at Tennessee, is in our Charlotte studios. And we're getting very used to a Don Staley team that is incredibly talented. They're ranked number four in the country, only one loss. That was to North Carolina State. But don't they have an incredibly unique player in the middle that gives them a chance maybe to get to the Final Four again? Well, there's no doubt about it. Aaliyah Boston can take this South Carolina team extremely far. She is so talented. She's got the size. That's a given. But she has such a high skill set and such a high basketball IQ. She can read the defense. She can score over one player, two players, three players in the double team. Anything you throw at her, she can make the right read out of it. And then on top of it, she can stretch the defense and knock down the three. And she is coming off of a historic night triple double not double double triple double 16 points 11 rebounds 10 blocks against georgia the second time in her career on the opposite end i've got my eyes on faustina fua she is the low post inside presence for lsu she's going to be going against Aaliyah boston she has to play smart with patience and with poise if she wants to come out on time lsu has done a wonderful job through the years under Nikki Fargus of upsetting a number of ranked teams, and they've already done that. Recently beat number seven, Texas A&M. So LSU plays that matchup zone and can cause some real problems. And speaking of that, Kayla Pointer, the 5'7 senior out of Marietta, Georgia, is having another all-conference season and leads the way in almost every category. And we're underway. 37th meeting all-time. South Carolina has certainly had the best of it lately. They have won the last 10 in a row against LSU. And that's going to be a quick turnover on the perimeter. And South Carolina, let's take a look at their starting lineup. Perfect 6-0 in conference, 11-1. Destiny Henderson at the point. Zia Cook broke out of a little bit of a shooting slump against Georgia the other night. Beal, Saxton, and we've talked about Aaliyah Boston. Incredibly talented and versatile group of women out there on the floor. For Don Staley and the Gamecocks. When I think about South Carolina and their starting five, Paul, you just think balance. They can score on the outside. They've got an inside presence. They have length, but they've got quickness with Destiny Henderson and Zaya Cook. Just an overall balanced group of five players. Victoria Saxton, a 6'2 junior out of Rome, Georgia, missing that play down inside. Aaliyah Boston is not the only player that can challenge the defense, any defense inside when you play South Carolina. That ball tipped away as Zaya Cook was trying to make a move. Cook wearing number one in black, 5'9", sophomore, out of Toledo, Ohio. Nice look, wide open into the cross court. Cook, who is a 44% shooter from outside the arc, comes up empty there, and let's take a look at LSU's starting lineup. Got off to a very slow start, lost four out of their first five, but now are four and two in conference. Kayla Pointer leads the way. Carly C., Raquel Spencer, they could use some more from her. And according to Nikki Fargus, when we spoke with her the other day, they really need a lot more production out of Awa Trazi. You're right, Paul. Awatrazi, she has the potential. She's got to shoot with more confidence, but if teams take away her shot, she needs to look to get downhill and think more like a playmaker. How can I set my teammates up for success? Crossover dribble, but then nowhere to go when you find Boston right in your face. The floater, both teams coming up a little bit cold to start this off. Offensive rebound put up and missed that time by Faustine Afua. And quickly to the other end, Charger block. A blocking foul is going to be called against LSU and Awa Trazi. And on the sideline in her 13th year in Columbia, South Carolina, the one and only, and I do mean that, Don Staley, 2017 national champs. 
And 32-1 and one last year, another perfect record for the second time in the SEC at 16-0. and 0. That is their fourth 30-win season in the last six years. National Coach of the Year last year and also a Naismith Basketball Hall of Famer in 2013. And oh, by the way, she's one of the greatest women's players of all time. She's just such a special coach. When I talk to her, the way that she knows her players, knows how to push their buttons, but also knows how to have relationships with them. She keeps it real with them. I just love listening to her talk about her team. You know, last season, she coached with so much joy, as she should have. That team was so great last year. This season's team is extremely talented as well. Pull up jump shot by Carly C, the 5'7 senior out of Illinois. That off the mark. And look at the tempo that South Carolina wants to play with as they spread the floor and share the ball off the mark of the rebound taken in traffic once again by C. We've talked a lot, Andrea, about the defense of LSU, but how about South Carolina working on a player that's so good in so many different ways offensively as uh, Kayla Pointer? Well, they're definitely going to have to guard a lot of high ball screens. And guarding ball screens is difficult, especially when you're an on-the-ball defender. So Zaya Cook, she's got a tough assignment today. Aaliyah Boston with the offensive rebound, and she will go to the free throw line to shoot a pair. Boston, six foot five sophomore. She was the first ever Gamecock to be the national freshman of the year when she averaged 13 and 11 last year. Originally from St. Thomas in the Virgin Islands and went to high school in Massachusetts. There is Nikki Fargus now in her 10th year at LSU. 20 and 10 last year, nine and seven, six NCAA appearances. Won national titles both as a player at Tennessee for the one and only Pat Summit as, and as an assistant coach there as well. Two of the really remarkable coaches in basketball, not women's basketball, in basketball are both Fargus and Staley. Coach Fargus has just done such a great job, even going back to when I played at having teams that you just don't want to play against because they make things so tough. They're so gritty. They play that zone defense. And this is just a hard place to play. Unlikely offensive rebound taken by the 5'7", Kayla Pointer, but she'll put that ball up and in. And Faustina Fu is being look at physical how, down low with Aaliyah Boston. Absolutely. I didn't, I, the, that, was, that was a pretty good fight in the octagon last night, but that looked like some real solid punches down inside as well. Look, look at the physicality. I mean, she's swimming underneath, but I like it. Leah Boston's going right back at her. This is going to be a battle. Good pass once again out of the double team. That's something as I've watched Aaliyah Boston in South Carolina on tape. She really recognizes the defense and shares the ball. Very, very willing pass her out of the point. Out of the post, I should say. Offensive rebound taken inside by Spencer. He'll dribble that ball back out and reset. Very slow start by both teams offensively. In the start, though, I like the attack and the aggression of LSU. They're playing fast. They look like they're playing with a lot of confidence. They've kind of got their chest out. They're playing up, not backing down from the Gamecocks. Pointer to the free throw line about the only category where she, you got to improve here, right? You were a point guard in college. You have the ball in your hands, particularly in crunch time. As wonderful as, point, as Pointer has been, only a 56 percenter from the line. And uh, got to improve in that area. Well, Tierra, this is Tierra Young at the line. Yes, I know, she, but I'm still she knocks, Yeah, she knocks him down. Really, Tierra though, Young Pointer, is a 70 Tierra percenter. Young, yeah, but you're right for Kayla Pointer. As much as defenses, as she can attack and get to the paint, drawing those fouls, she has to be able to convert from the point guard position. Young has had a nice stretch shooting the basketball of late 15 of her last 27. Strong move, carving out some space. Sexton with the layup down inside against a lot of pressure. 
Great job at going away from the defense. She went baseline. She's got such long arms. She can put that up and in. Oh, that looked like a traveling violation down inside. A foul was called. A nice play getting right to the defense of South Carolina. And this is what LSU needs from Asia Petty. She's so athletic. Coach Vargas talked to us about. She's a freshman, but she can really make an impact on this team. She runs sprints with the guards. She can get up and down the floor. Still has to learn a little bit of physicality and really get down the defensive end of the floor. But they need her to start playing really well. Freshman out of Baltimore, Maryland, wants to be a physical therapist when she graduates from LSU, but just getting her career started, a long way to go before then. Here is a good look at the matchup zone. Dalen Cherry now at the top of it, wearing number one, and a pretty good offensive execution by South Carolina as they tie it at six. Just under five and a half minutes remaining in the opening quarter. Great defensive rotation by South Carolina. Guarding the ball screen and then helping each other on the pass. Step back jump shot against pressure and knocking that down. That was against the Leah Boston. Nice play by Pointer and then Boston running the floor and answering quickly at the other end. Make or miss, LSU has to sprint back in transition. You can't be too happy about a made shot against South Carolina. You have to get back. Nice save off the perimeter by Young, but then quickly turns that ball over and Cook trying to find the handle. South Carolina wants to play with pace. They are second in the league in scoring behind Arkansas at 84 points per game. Look at that. Nice work inside, but uh, Boston can't finish with the left hand. What makes it so difficult to play against the zone defense of LSU? Well, it's a matchup zone, so it's difficult because they're guard it's a zone, but they also play you like a man-to-man. -man. So when you come into their zone, they might stick with you a little bit longer than you're used to when you're going against a traditional zone. And right now, LSU, they're keeping it traditional 2-3. Sometimes their zone will shift formations. It might be a 3-2 or a 1-3-1, but they want to keep bigs on bigs. So they're keeping two guards up high, those guards are working really hard, and they've got three down low. Boston digs out the loose ball down in the paint and puts that up for her second basket. You like the pace of the game so far for LSU? I like it. I think they're pushing when they have numbers, which is exactly what they want. But when they don't have numbers, they're slowing it down and being very intentional and deliberate about what they want on the offensive end. They just have to take care of the basketball. Nice read by Zaya Cook wearing number one in black with the interception. Quickly into the corner. You see the tempo ball movement in Boston. She can make that shot. Okay, air ball, but that was not at all indicative of how Aaliyah Boston has extended the length and the versatility of her game. And speaking of that, when we come back, Andrea is going to take us through the defense that Don Staley has to deal with from LSU. Opening quarter in Baton Rouge, number four, South Carolina on top, narrowly of LSU, 10 to 8. When you play LSU, Nikki Fargus has installed this matchup zone defense, which is a topic of conversation and a topic of worry for coaches like Don Staley and around the rest of the SEC. Well, when I've watched South Carolina against the zone, there's so many ways that they can face the zone. And one way is they'll go three out, two in, and they're trying to get the basketball to the paint. That SEC logo. So what they do is they overload. Destiny Henderson's coming all the way over to the side. Aaliyah Boston flashes. They've got all their players on one side. Destiny Henderson gets two players on the baseline. There's three defenders in the paint. Aaliyah Boston has two options. She can pass it out and knock it down for a wide open three. So the three out, two in, you'll see them use that against the zone. They've already gone in this game four out and one in. They've had Aaliyah Boston on the outside. They've played her on the inside. So Don Staley is definitely drawing things up, a lot of motion, sometimes set plays to score against zone defenses. And does the zone itself kind of take the air out of the ball for your opponent as, as South Carolina or Texas A&M or Missouri, whoever it might be, tries to figure things out, even though they've worked on it all week in preparation for LSU, naturally just slowing things down? 
Well, I think so, because when teams are sprinting back into a zone defense, they're sprinting to a spot. So it's a lot harder when you have someone running right next to you because they're your man. That opens up a lot more lanes and you feel a little bit more freedom. When you're coming down the court and you look up and you see people just in a spot waiting for you to get there, it's a lot harder to figure out ways to attack and transition. Both teams off to fairly cold starts offensively. LSU 3 of 12. South Carolina 4 of 12, but all four of those baskets have come in the paint, so you can see where they want to attack and have their advantage, and they do an amazing job on the offensive glass. They rebound 46% of their own misses. Sometimes that's their best offense. Look at Boston get out on the floor and defend 35 feet away. It's just what makes her so special. One of the many things I'll say that makes her special, not many post players at that size are moving like that on the perimeter. A really good pass that time from C into Afua, but was unable to make the finish. She thought that she was hammered. There has been a lot of physical play so far in the game, but a good shot blocker inside. Not a good shot blocker. Maybe one of the best in the country in Aaliyah Boston. Great, a great shot blocker. This possession, South Carolina, patience, spacing, and ball movement to score against the zone. Boy, that was really good offense against the zone. Can't make the shot, but you can't draw it up any better in terms of ball sharing and ball movement and spacing. That's what you want. Ball reversal. You hit Aaliyah Boston. Dawn Staley wants Aaliyah Boston to get touches. Doesn't have to be scoring, but good things happen when she touches the basketball. Cherry and Young out on the perimeter. Cherry wearing number one. Shot clock winding down. Got to go. Afua against the shot clock, that off the backboard. Oh, beautiful pass, basket, and an attempt for the three-point play. What a beautiful assist down inside. Destiny Hesterson's hot finding Boston. It amazes me how Destiny Henderson plays with so much speed, but so much ball control. What a great find. Doesn't even look like she sees her pass over her shoulder. Little one-hand swing pass right on the money for Aaliyah Boston to score. Second trip to the line for Boston. There is Destiny Henderson, 12.6 rebounds, six assists per contest. The best in the SEC, the 5'7 junior out of Fort Myers, Florida. 7-0 run now for South Carolina, all scored by Aaliyah Boston. And now South Carolina showing some zone of their own. You surprised by this? No, I'm not surprised. I think that LSU, they had some confidence going against the man. They were playing with confidence on the offensive end. And South Carolina, they've got great length against these LSU guards. So going that long 1-3-1 zone defense with Lili Grissett at the top could disrupt them. Turnaround jump shot off the mark, and Tierra Young, who ended that 8 0 run with a basket at the other end, quickly with a rebound. Nice pass, pointer to Afuo, who's got to finish that. That was a really nice look and the best opportunity so far. Afuo, you can see her slapping her hands, going back up the floor, knows that she missed an important one. Well, that's a shot, shot that she can make. Both Afuo and Aliyah Boston have missed close up shots at the basket. Afua averaging 12 points, 9 rebounds, and a good shot blocker in her own right, averaging about one and a half blocks per contest. Shot clock winding down. Long jumper on the way. That missed by Destiny Littleton, wearing number 11 in black, just on the floor for South Carolina. Pull up, jump shot. Nice answer that time. Tierra Young off to a pretty nice start, the 5'8 sophomore out of Shreveport. Really like her mid-range game. Off the dribble, she can get the ball. One hard dribble right into her shot. Time winding down. This has been a good start for LSU against the number four team in the country to trail by only one, 13 to 12. After the opening quarter in Baton Rouge, when we come back, we will take a very close look and get to know all-conference Kayla Pointer. LSU looking for what would be a huge upset number, number four South Carolina trailing by only one after the opening period 13 12 and Kayla Pointer 
Second team all conference last year, this year having another magnificent season and has a very, very special relationship, does she not, with a woman who happens to be her coach and also her aunt. Well, I just love talking about and watching Kayla Pointer throughout her whole career. She's, you know, Nikki Fargus's aunt. Her father passed away in 2017. She wears a ring in his honor that she got made for him. It says LLKP, long live Kirk Pointer. And her dad coached her, coached her AAU team, and just a special, special player. And Coach Fargus said she is courageous in her ability to lose someone so important to her as her father and still say hey i want to come to lsu and represent as best as i can and she has played her heart out over her career i mean she started off as a freshman played behind chloe jackson and regime moncrief and then her sophomore year just took off that's her and her dad very close relationship um and kurt pointer you know, he coached an AAU program in Atlanta. I'm out of Atlanta, and it was a team that you always knew about. He was intense. He was tough. He was definitely hard on Kayla, and I know that, you know, she knows he would be so proud of her. A wonderful relationship between father and daughter. A lot of tough love there, but uh, Kayla Pointer is honoring her father's memory each and every time she's in the practice gym or out on the court and has had a wonderful career at South Carolina. You pointed out how, how good he was as a coach and a club director, and look at the players he's helped to, to nurture and develop. So, so many star players. I mean, Victoria Saxton, India Jones, Hugh Morrison is playing so well this season. I think that they're representing him as a coach so well in the SEC. And Jordan Isaacs uh, for Georgia actually read a quote from her. She says when she started playing basketball, she hated it. She felt like they ran way too much. But when she started AAU basketball with Kirk Pointer, it made her fall in love with the game. And that's how special of a coach he was. Cut down the lane right on cue by Pointer and has that ball deflected out of bounds. Ruled that it went off her leg. And it'll be South Carolina basketball. There is Nikki Fargus again in her 10th year. Had a very successful, albeit brief run at UCLA before she came to LSU and has done a wonderful job. Five 20 plus win seasons. We mentioned the number of trips to the NCAAs, but also if you play in the SEC, you play a lot of ranked teams and she's beaten her share. She's got a good record against ranked opponents, particularly in Baton Rouge. And this, this is what LSU does. They just, they hang around, they play with an edge, they play with a chip on their shoulder, they speed you up a little bit with their defense, they confuse you. I mean, I remember playing against LSU and it was always frustrating. When we spoke to Nikki Fargus just the other day, got very, very emotional when we talked about Kirk and married to her sister Simone and then also said, I'm putting way too much on my niece, but I really wouldn't ask her to do anything she couldn't handle. And she stepped up right to it as LSU goes out to what I think is their first lead, 14-13. Loose ball tracked down that time by Zaya Cook. Give you some numbers from the opening quarter. Aaliyah Boston having a big impact both offensively and particularly defensively. Fastine Afua really hasn't gotten into the mix so far for LSU. That's going to be a foul down inside called against Trazi battling against number 15. I'm here. Look at the lift by Tierra Young. That one dribble pull up, I cannot say enough about it because it is such a hard skill to get down, to get the ball from the dribble right into your shot. She does such a solid job. Kayla Pointer with just one basket. Tierra Young already in double figures with 10. Coach Vargas said, Paul, that Tierra Young has been coming into practice and choosing to sell out for her teammates. She's playing how she's practicing. That shot did not fall. A little bit of a late whistle, and it'll be Kayla Pointer going to the free throw line. More on Young. Again, the 5'7", 5'8", sophomore out of Shreveport. 16 on the road against Missouri. Prior to that, 20 against Texas A&M. So having a very nice run right now, and particularly going up against number four, South Carolina, and their defense and shot blocking. She's already in double figures, four or five shooting. 
And she's been in double figures the last five games, and she's been playing aggressive. Still talking about Tierra Young. The last five games, anywhere from 10 to 15 field goal attempts. She's looking for her shot. She's shooting with confidence. She's taken pull-up jumpers over India Jones in the Texas A&M game. She's already taken one over Aaliyah Boston. It's that confidence that's coming from her practice habits. Mentioned Pointer and her lack of free throw efficiency at only 56% and right there making one of two. Averaging 22 points per game over the last four. Playing some high, low, good catch down in traffic. Basket will not fall, but Saxman will go to the free throw line. Andrea, how about the bounce back for LSU? And we talked to Nikki Fargus about it a little bit. They started losing four, three in a row and four out of their first five. And here they are, a very competitive, nice run in the toughest conference in the country. Now at four and two, and in that, win over Texas A&M and Missouri on the road. Well, I think that what Coach Fargus said to me makes so much sense. She said that they just needed more time. And I, I know COVID, obviously, with the social distancing and the practicing in groups and you can't scrimmage, and she felt like that obviously took a toll on a lot of teams, but it really was hard for them. They just needed more time to gel together, needed more time for the cream to rise to the top. And now they've got some rotations. They've got players other than Kayla Pointer and Faustina Fua that know their role. Carly C has been selling out to being that defensive stopper. Now Tierra Young is scoring with confidence. So it's just taken them some time to gel and get going in the right direction. But they're definitely moving there now. Current standing, South Carolina at 6-0, Texas A&M. They were ranked number seven when they lost to LSU. They have bounced back very nicely. Georgia with a good job there. Now among the ranked teams, seven ranked teams in the SEC. Alabama is starting to get some votes. According to Charlie Cream, uh, South Carolina would be and will be the number one overall seed. It is a tough place to play. Mississippi State in there as well. I mean, seven I, ranked, I'm, ranked I'm teams in the conference. Yeah, that is such, that is a tough, top nine i mean that is such a really the reason that we only in the sec maybe get six seven or eight is because all of those teams are playing each other asia petty comes back on wearing number 15 faustine afua the 6'5 senior out of the pool of georgia will head back to the sideline afua needs to give lsu a little bit more doesn't she at both ends of the floor so far here comes cherry Pointer in there so. battling for the rebound, keeps it alive. Yeah, more on Afua? Yeah, more, more on Faustina Afua, just a little more energy, edge, and looking to score. She can score in so many ways. They also have to get her some touches. Shot clock. Pointer, dribble drive, left-handed layup, not there, goes and gets her own rebound. Nicely done at five foot eight. Among the trees, good aggressive play. Strong rebound taken in traffic by Saxton. Boy, back and forth, here comes Cherry, and lays that up and in, up against Zaya Cook, and LSU now leading it 17-13 on a nine-nothing run against number four, South Carolina. I talked about Carly C committing to being that defensive stopper, 94 feet from the basket. She just caused that turnover. Those two points, you have to give credit to Carly C. Pass down inside, and a traveling violation is going to be called against South Carolina. Pointer at the other end. Had to take a shot to beat the clock, and the shooter always knows where it's coming off. Look at the look at the hustle, the scrappiness, just not giving up on plays. That's what LSU is known for. They're so scrappy. You, you almost want to say they're annoying because they just they bother you, they frustrate you. That's what they're known for. Playing with the chip on their shoulder. Jalen Cherry, nice little step through move. When she's playing with confidence, she's really good. Pointer keeping her dribble alive, looking inside to Trazi. Good defense down inside once again by Victoria Saxton. Some of the frustration for South Carolina with good reason in the hustle for LSU. 5 of 20 from the floor, Andrea. 0 of 7 from three-point range. And Kayla Pointer just coming down, stopping right in the way of Destiny Henderson. Looked like she took a big shot. 
it almost looked like her feet weren't set. She might have gotten away with one there. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I, I thought that was a block, not a charge, but Kayla Pointer and LSU will take the call. LSU at 6 and 6 overall, 4 and 2 in conference. South Carolina, their only loss, fourth game of the year to North Carolina State. That's uh, going to be over the baseline. Some turnovers here by both teams. Asia Petty, the 6 1 freshman that you talked about that they really have high expectation for down at LSU. Lost the handle on that out of bounds. And LSU has to be a little smarter on defense. They had a mismatch. Bree Beal was guarding Kayla Pointer, and Destiny Henderson was down low on Awa Trazi. Someone for LSU has to recognize that and take advantage of it. Foul called against Petty, working down in the low post against Boston, who's just back on the floor for the Gamecocks. Well, where's the offense for LSU going to come from now? Tierra Young and Kayla Pointer both on the sideline. Step back, fall away, jump shot beautifully made. South Carolina needed that basket. It had been a while. I love watching the touch on Destiny Henderson's jump shot. The way that she can attack, stop on a diamond. It's almost like she just floats it up and in. Jerry down the lane. No, oh, nicely done. Good block that time by number 12, Brea Beal. Ooh, that's was what right Brea Beal does, Paul. That's what she does. Oh, boy. This, these players are really going after one another in a hard, clean way. LSU with the lead. Well, Destiny Henderson, we know she can pass, but she is silky smooth. Look at the attack with the left and that just nice little floater for two. Thank you, Peter. A full day of college basketball coming your way. A little football as well if you decide to move away. South Carolina trailing LSU 17-15. And Andrea, we were talking about during the break that this is kind of, you couldn't have drawn it up any better for LSU. And this is exactly what LSU wants, right where they want to be. South Carolina playing a little just off. They look a little uncomfortable, especially on the offensive end. But that's what LSU does. They're gritty. They're tough. They want to outwork you, out physical you, make you play fast. So South Carolina, they just have to slow down. They've got such great length. I mean, they can score against this zone. And speaking of physical play, they're reviewing that last foul on LSU to see if it was uh, flagrant. And the officials are taking a look at that. Bree Beal getting in the mix down inside. Oh, look at that. Lots of contact. Ooh. A hard fall indeed. Yeah. Getting word from the official score that it was called a basketball play and move along. It looked like to me Asia Petty was trying to block the shot. She came down hard with her hands, but I think she was going for the ball. Beal, a 52% free throw shooter, the 6'1 sophomore out of Rock Island, Illinois. And both free throws up and good, an area where both teams have struggled. Now five of nine from the line for South Carolina. Love that. Love the defensive energy by South Carolina this possession. Aaliyah Boston, such a great job at stopping dribble penetration so Destiny Henderson could get back. But Jalen Cherry makes him pay. What a tough shot. You're absolutely right. That was really good ball screen defense. But Cherry was just too good going from right to left. And Jalen Cherry, she played well against South Carolina last year. 13 points, 6 of 11 from the field. She played all 40 minutes. Coach Fargus said, keep an eye on Jalen Cherry. She usually plays well against the Gamecocks. Very nice play against the matchup zone. Sexton with a little mid-range pull-up jump shot. LSU just trying to get through this stretch with both Tierra Young and Kayla Pointer on the sideline. Dangerous pass down inside, looking for Asia Petty. Coming up next, our afternoon of women's college basketball continues in Oxford with Florida taking on Ole Miss. Then number eight, Texas A&M will follow, will take on Missouri following that one. Both games are right here on the SEC Network.
and the ESPN app. I'm Paul Sunderland out in Southern California. Andrea Carter in one of our Charlotte studios. That's become almost home for you, isn't it? And speaking of studio, after you finish this game, you're moving over to the studio with Peter Burns later on. Listen, I'm everywhere. Atlanta, Charlotte, studio, in the game. Just let me know where you need me to be. In demand. Getting some Not pretty good offense. Though, Paul. <laughs> a little too far. You don't yeah. want to travel right now. That's Take a little my word too for far. it. Yeah. Has South Carolina found something? They're still cold. They're not knocking down shots, but the last four or five possessions against this matchup zone, they're getting good looks. And I like their ball movement. Just have to settle in when they get the shots. But going down low to Victoria Saxon and the Lee of Boston, you really can't go wrong, especially with Asia Petty on the floor. No offense to Asia Petty, but she's not Faustina Fua. She doesn't have that presence that Afua has to disrupt shots. Nice steal that time by Kayla Pointer, wearing number three in white, just back in at the point for Nikki Fargus and LSU. Open jump shot on the way, 17-footer no. And Destiny Henderson, who's been pretty well controlled, she really wants to get up and down, but that's what she can do. Quickly here to Boston, who puts that up and in. Aaliyah Boston now, four of eight from the floor now with nine points. And that's the difference between LSU and South Carolina. LSU, they do a really nice job in transition. When they have numbers, they like to push. Destiny Henderson in South Carolina, she's pushing the basketball whether she has numbers or not. She is putting pressure on the defense. Nice backdoor cut, but cut off. Trazi thought about it. Down the lane, steps through, reverse layup, flips it up and in. What a move by Awa Trazi. That is what Coach Fargus wants from Awa Trazi. Don't just settle for the three-pointer. She likes to pick and pop, but Zaya Cook, she closed out so long, Awa Trazi attacked instead. Boston trying to throw the ball down inside, turned over by South Carolina LSU, really playing some solid defense. South Carolina just 8 of 26 from the floor, turned it over eight times. Pointer working on Boston. Trozzi uh, in some real traffic there. Not a lot of not a lot of room, but uh, LSU with a possession error. Coach Fargus wants Awa Trozzi to think playmaker. So shot fake, step through, reverse layup. Come on. And then on the other side, defensive playmaker. You can make plays on the defensive end as well. She's against Victoria Saxon, gets the tip on the lob pass. That's what LSU needs. Trazi nowhere to go through the ball on the floor comes up loose and South Carolina's got it off the LSU turnover. You know Paul Only one thing I've noticed, in the opening half. South Carolina's defense has done a nice job at when LSU does attack they just keep sliding and force them to the baseline and they don't foul. They haven't really fouled drivers in the first half. Boy going quickly that is a lot of pace from LSU off the side of the iron is C and back the other way. And finally gets that one to roll in. Bree Beal with the basket. Once again, if you're LSU, Andrea, if you're LSU, you have got to love the way this first half has gone. You're, you're very happy going into the locker room. Absolutely, if you're LSU, they've played tough, they've played hard, they've sped South Carolina up a little bit on the offensive end with that matchup zone that we talked about. And, and South Carolina, they're such a talented team. They've got so much size, so much quickness with Destiny Henderson. So to limit South Carolina the way that LSU has, they've got to feel good about it. But South Carolina, Paul, strong third quarter team. Yeah. Yeah, it's been by far their best quarter, their best stands, if you will, as Raquel Spencer, the 5'10 senior out of New Orleans, will go to the free throw line, where now she is 9 of 14 so far on the year. Plenty of time for South Carolina to get a good look. Boston with 9, Saxton with 4, Beal with 4 on the other side. Tierra Young in double figures with 10, Pointer and Cherry. Cherry's been good off the bench. Kayla Pointer has been pretty quiet so far for LSU. That's even better news for Nikki Fargus that Kayla Pointer, who's been averaging 22 a game over the last four, she only is one of four from the floor and tied at 23 with 17.9 left. 
Aaliyah Boston, uh, one of the huge stories in college basketball last year when she was the National Freshman of the Year and had an incredible impact, coming off a triple-double. Unique, as we talked about. Well, I mean, yeah, she runs the floor. She can score down low. She sticks with plays. Look how high she keeps the basketball. Even if she gets it off the ground, she takes it high immediately. Destiny Henderson did a nice job at finding her a couple of times off of drives. She's just such a tough matchup. Four for eight from the field. She's missed two threes, but I think she rushed them. She can absolutely knock down the three as well. First team all SEC last year. Shot 61% from the floor also. Defensive player of the year with 86 blocks. And uh, okay, she had 10 blocks against Georgia, but she's got 27. That's not an aberration. She's got 27 over the last four games. Even I can figure out that's almost seven per game. Time winding down in the opening half. A surprise. Oh, LSU with a steal, and they've got time. They may have the lead going into the locker room, and they do. What a beautiful play by Carly C. Time expires after the first 20 minutes in LSU. I said it could be a huge upset. Well, they couldn't have asked for a better first half. South Carolina has really struggled from the floor. LSU on top 25-23. Let's send it to our SEC studio and Peter Burns. Take it away, Pete. Watch Jalen Cherry coming down the court. She follows the basketball for the entire possession. It's energy, it's effort. So she traps Zaya Cook. Then she sprints. She's on the ball with Bree Beal. Sprints back to Zaya Cook, literally running back and forth following the basketball. And Carly C gets beat, but Jalen Cherry's right there to help her. Carly C recovers, gets the steal, and LSU scores in transition. That's what LSU does on the defensive end, and they need easy buckets on the offensive end that can get it from their defense. That was like a video game. Cherry was all <laughs> over the place. I mean, and look at that. Field goals, South Carolina, all nine of their successful field goals were in the paint, 0 of 9 from outside the arc. A really good first 20 minutes for LSU. And we were talking about it, Paul. You know, I feel like South Carolina, they... They had some possessions of quality ball movement and making the extra pass, but their shots were rushed and fast, and they haven't hit. Last three games for Nikki Fargus and LSU have told the story. They turn you over, and then they make you pay at the other end. Not the same degree that has happened. South Carolina does a really good job of defending once they do turn it over. But uh, you can see it's a huge part of what LSU does offensively and defensively. And now Atrazi opens things up at the offensive end for LSU. They now lead at 27-23. Well, one of LSU's goals for every game is to score a point for every turnover forced. But like you said, South Carolina does a good job at defending when they turn, turn the ball over. Don Staley's message to her number four ranked Gamecocks in the locker room at the break. I think it has to be slowed down. It had to be slowed down because they're playing fast. They're playing with pace. I don't think Destiny Henderson needs to slow down. But when they get into the half and they're making the extra pass, slow down, shoot with composure, shoot with confidence. Bree Beal, the 6'1 sophomore out of Illinois, attacking the basket will get to the free throw line to shoot a pair. Some numbers from the opening half. Boston was 4 of 8. The rest of the Gamecocks, 5 of 19. We mentioned they were 0 for 9 from outside the arc. And the 23 first half points was their second worst first half total so far on the season. The worst? When was that, Andrea? That loss against NC State. That's right. 20 points against NC State. The final score in that one was 54 to 46. The only loss so far on the year. The only blemish, if you will. NC State, a really good team, currently ranked number two. That was South Carolina's only loss. It's kind of two different stories, Paul. You know, the NC State game, I felt like South Carolina was really stagnant, almost like they weren't playing together. Zawa Trazi is just playing with a ton of confidence. This game on the offensive end, South Carolina, it's almost like they're playing and shooting too fast. Everything is a little too rushed. Settle in, trust each other, ball movement, spacing, and then shoot with confidence. 
Crosby now with only four, but given Coach Fargus more, when we talked specifically, what do you need from which player? And she immediately went to Trozzi. We need more from her. Passing in a very tight window, and nice play by Pointer to pull the ball back out. Pointer only with three points so far. She'd been averaging 22 over the last four. LSU with their largest lead so far in the afternoon. LSU is in such a great spot with Kayla Pointer only having three points. Faustina Fua 0 for 4, and they've got the lead. It has to be their defense. Turnover there, tough pass down along the top of the shoes for Afua to handle. The 6'5 senior out of Georgia with a couple of fouls. Look at her battling inside with Boston. Good, hard battle. But very physical. Plenty of time on the shot clock. Henderson kicks in the corner to Cook. Open three. Still not there. Good offensive rebound. And they're going to call a foul. I think they got that one on Trozzi on the blockout try against Boston. We talked about this in the first half, but the battle down low between Faustina Fua. Awa Trazi and Aaliyah Boston. Just so <laughs> physical. You have to be physical with her because she's so talented and they have really been taking it to her. But you know, I'm really impressed because Aaliyah Boston, she plays with a lot of composure. She doesn't get too bothered. Even though Faustina Pua, Awa Trazi, they are hammering her down low. She just reseals, re-gets position and keeps going. Afua trying to carve out some space. Good defense that time by Boston, but on the fallaway jump shot, Aaliyah Boston, number four in black, would be called for hitting Afua on the arm. No need to foul on that play. She slid. She was in the right position just with a high hand. Faustina Afua, I like her catch-and-shoot mid-range jumper, but she's dribbling there, getting into her shot. Not a high percentage shot for her. Just contest it there if you're Boston. Afua, a good free throw shooter at 73%. Again, averaging 12 points, 9 rebounds, a handful of block shots at 12 and 8. The game last Monday, the 66-64 win over Missouri. That was at Missouri, and that's a tough place to play, as you know, in Columbia. The other Columbia, 31-25. Now the lead, just under 7-10 remaining in the third. You see the zone by LSU, more traditional 2-3. If you're Kayla Pointer and Carly Cece, you have to work a lot harder. Kayla Pointer, you have to sprint to cover Zaya Cook when she, or Destiny Henderson when she gets it. First three-point make for South Carolina so far in the afternoon. Now one of 12 after going 0 of 9 in the opening half. South Carolina has beaten LSU the last 10 times they got together on the basketball court. Spencer loses her footing, and Beal coming out of the backcourt takes it all the way and lays it up and in. Nice play going coast to coast. I love the way Bree Beal plays. Just, just look at her. Not even bothered by the steal, by the layup. Just going to go back down, do my job. She is such a great defender. She's skilled on the offensive end, but it's just her composure, her attitude that she plays with that I love. Inside to a four again, head fake, fall back, jump shot, and once again, Boston is called for the foul. Boy, it is so physical down in the low post, and then a couple of touch fouls called against Boston, against a four. Look how Bree Beal just sprints. She turned and sprinted, and then didn't give up on the play. Gets the ball right as it goes out of bounds, and a step through with the left to finish. And, and you're right, Paul, you know, they're being so physical down low, and the refs aren't calling anything on the posts up, but they are calling, I think just that she hit her body kind of down low. Did you see the little hip to hip contact? But for me, I kind of want to let that one go if I'm the ref. They're being so physical already. Well, if you hit a shooter, it's a foul. Yeah. Whether it be on the hip, on the arm. And so, it, but uh, Leah Boston will be a little more careful as she picks up her second personal foul. And she, like Afua, also with two fouls. Pass into traffic. Beal through some traffic into Boston and can't get that to fall. Boy, Bree Beal, like uh, 
Dalen Cherry, who we showed earlier, is all over the place. Oh, that wins in and out. Heartbreak that time for Tierra Young, who had 10 first half points and then commits the foul. LSU still leading at 33 30. 529 left in the third. Zaya Cook has done a solid job with her perimeter defense. You want to cut off the outside hand and, and cut off the drive, but when she hasn't, she's played straight up. She's kept her feet moving and just contested and made it really tough for LSU guards to hit layups. Three games prior to Georgia, Zaya Cook only averaging eight points per game as opposed to 16 on her average. Nice play by South Carolina, but came through. Speaking of that, 16 points against uh, Georgia to sort of snap out of that offensive slump. Ball is kicked, shot clock will reset. Nice lead here for LSU, Andrea. Well, Destiny Henderson is trying to make it tough on LSU, attacking with the left. I'm not passing it this time, I'm putting it in. with Andrea Carter, former star at Tennessee. I'm Paul Sunderland. Thanks so much for joining us. South Carolina, ranked number four, trailing by one, but starting to get it going in the second half is their point guard, the Jet, Destiny Henderson. Well, when we asked Kayla Pointer about Destiny Henderson, she said she's lightning fast. I've never seen anybody that fast, but even on that last shot, she's got speed, but she's got control, body control. She finishes with her eyes on the rim. Great skill set. I think she does a really nice job at balancing, pushing in transition, looking for her shot, and finding her teammates. Anderson, 5'7", junior out of Fort Myers, Florida. When you look at South Carolina and go back through the years as Don Staley has built this into one of the strongest programs in all of basketball, when you go back to even 2015, most of the players were for South Carolina, North Carolina, or Georgia. Now, Dawn Staley, because of what she's built, because of how she prepares, because of who she is, she can go into any home in the country, or in the world for that matter, and go in and compete for the top talent. Absolutely. I mean, South Carolina has become a program that everyone knows, no matter where you are. 2017 national champions as well as another final four besides that 32 and one and a perfect 16 and 0 last year before the season was canceled and they were the unanimous number one team in the country when the season was called off because of COVID. Kayla Pointer nice basket at the other end for LSU and a foul is going to be called we'll see if that's on Faustina Fua if it is that's her third it could be on Trazi. Nice job by Aaliyah Boston. I love the quick move. Don Staley said there are three things that she can do if she gets double or triple team. Make a quick move is one, score in the space that they give you, or drag it out and look for your teammates. She made a quick move there and got the foul. That foul was called on Awatrazi. That was her third personal foul. Wednesday on the SEC Network and the ESPN app. Our men's basketball doubleheader starts in Gainesville with Vanderbilt squaring off against the Gators who are getting healthy and playing really good basketball right now. Another big win yesterday, 6.30 Eastern. That'll be followed by Ole Miss and Arkansas at Bud Walton Arena. Beal now guarding Young on the switch. It's such Taking a luxury for Here South comes Carolina. Pointer. Look oh, at Pointer nice weaving her way, through, weaving her way through all of Baton Rouge to lay that up and in. South Carolina looking to answer at the other end. Offensive rebound taken by Beal, puts it back up and in. Really can't say enough about Bree Beal. I mean, she gets an offensive rebound, puts it back in, and then she comes down. The versatility to defend Kayla Pointer on the perimeter and now defend Alatrazi down low, but you don't want to foul there. Kayla Pointer, who was very, very quiet in the opening half, in spite of the fact that LSU had the 25-23 lead, starting to find her rhythm and some space. South Carolina made it hard on her to score in the first half at the rim, and she's done a nice job at adjusting. She's changing directions, getting to the other side, using the rim to protect the ball so she can score. Young, dribbling, 
And comes up empty on that, but the rebound is lost by South Carolina Saxton. Out to pointer, finds herself all alone for the three. They did not reset the shot clock on that. It looked like Saxton had possession, and going quickly to the other end is Henderson. A very, very easy basket for South Carolina, which recaptures the lead. As South Carolina adjusted their defense, it looks really hard now for uh, Pointer and LSU to get a good look. Well, they're really staying engaged in their man-to-man. -man. They're switching some with Victoria Saxon and Bree Beal. I think they're switching a little bit more and just guarding on the perimeter, making it tough. Good hustle by Trozzi to come away with that loose ball. Gave it up that time to Kayla Pointer, who was called for the traveling violation. As far as turnovers, that's 11 for LSU. 10 so far in the game for South Carolina. I like South Carolina's defense, Paul. And when we talked to Don Staley, she said what's next level for them is their offense, the efficiency, the flow, finding each other, plays like that, capitalizing on mismatches, scoring in space, just that offensive flow. That's the piece that they're still trying to build. Really good entry pass that time. Boston with almost an uncontested turnaround jump shot now with 13. And once again, being hit on the arm, foul is going to be called. That was against Sexton, so it'll be free throws coming to LSU. Aaliyah Boston, just score in the space that they give you. No hesitation. She turns, she has space. That is such an easy shot for her and the focus to finish. You know, I mentioned or I said, what adjustments has South Carolina made? They're just playing their usual hard-nosed man-to-man -man defense. I mean, they give up. 61 points per game in conference play. That's the second best. And when you look at points, a lot of that has to do with pace of play. They're averaging 84, so for them to give up 59 is a really good number. And they're holding opponents. I think this is the more important number. Field goal percentage against, and they're second in the SEC at 35. So they play pretty good defense every time out. When you watch their games, their length is just so hard to score over. But that's it's, gonna the, it's be a, the offensive end. They just have to gel, slow down, and find that offensive blow. It is tough against LSU. So many teams have had a hard time with it. Jalen Cherry wearing number one in white comes back on. Had a very, very impressive first 20 minutes. Came off the bench. A couple of uh, spectacular baskets. The 5'8 senior out of Pascagoula, Mississippi. I love saying that. Pascagoula. Jerry, nice attack of the basket. Pointer that time over the top of Boston. What a good finish. Looking ahead to Beal, fighting through the contact. And our, excuse me, Faustina Fua just picked up her third personal foul. That is a big play as we near the end of this third quarter. It would have been awfully good for LSU for uh, Faustina Fua to be going into the uh, fourth quarter guarding Boston with just two personal fouls, now with three. I like that Bree Beal went right to her, felt the contact, put it up, drew the foul. Kayla Pointer and Bree Beal have both really stepped up their play in this second half. South Carolina has been struggling from the free throw line, made just half of their 14. Beal, not a good free throw shooter at 52%, missed both Boston with the rebound. Look at Aaliyah Boston. So she, she gets the offensive rebound, has so many players around her, dribbles it out, and then she's calling out the play, pointing people in the right direction. Just high IQ, vocal leadership, so many good things from Boston. Zaya Cook called for the offensive foul. Nice play by Cherry. Look how excited Jalen Cherry is, taking pride in her defense. I love when I see a good scream from a player on the floor. You should feel good about plays like that. Well, remember the sequence with Cherry that we showed right before the second half. I mean, she was all over the court going down the lane, lays that up high off the glass, rebound. Shot changed by Boston, rebound by Boston. 
And a foul is going to be called on the perimeter. That'll go against Carly C. We were talking about Aaliyah Boston, Andrea, and the games I've watched, I've been so impressed. She is just so sophisticated and so smart in recognizing what's going on on the floor. The double team, she kicks the ball. She's so unselfish. Uh, very, very impressive. She's only a sophomore. It's things that I've seen from her, like where she has the basketball and she's taking it into a dribble handoff, reads the handoff and fakes yeah. the handoff and keeps the dribble instead. It's, it's plays like that, plays that you usually see guards making that she makes because she knows how to read the defense. And Coach Don Staley said last year she really listened to everything Ty Harris said, everything Kiki Herbert Harrigan said. She listened well, and she knows it now. She knows what they're trying to do, and she could tell everybody. Big three-pointer once again from distance by Kayla Pointer. Ty Harris and Kiki Herbert Harrigan, a couple of pretty good players to listen to when you're getting out to your first experience. Nice pull-up jump shot by Zaya Cook. Shot clock is off. Pointer has really heated it up here in the third quarter. Now with a dozen, she only had two first half points. Afua off the screen and rolls. So number 24 in white, Faustina Fua. Really beautiful execution for Kayla Pointer. And Kayla Pointer, she is so skilled. She says her dad, Kirk Pointer, always told her, find some work. And she has found some work in this second half. Smooth three-pointer off the dribble. And then finding Faustina Fu on the pick and pop for two. Find some work, Kayla Pointer. LSU led at the break 25-23 and Andrea thanks to Kayla Pointers nine points in the third quarter hanging on to that same lead 45-43 what did she find against uh, South Carolina's defense you know I liked the way she attacked in the first half but she wasn't able to finish at the rim she is now scoring in space she is attacking and creating space for herself to finish touch on her floaters to score over high hands shooting with confidence it now looks like She's in the zone. You know how you say players are in the zone? She found her zone in that third quarter. One of four in the first 20 minutes, four of six, and found it from distance, and then also a very nice assist to Faustine Ofua, who picked up that third personal foul. And Nikki Fargus in her 10th year at LSU, 30 wins against ranked teams. Now look, if you play in the SEC, you're gonna play a lot of ranked opponents, but that doesn't mean you're gonna beat them. 30 wins over ranked opponents could it be 31 over number four south carolina on this sunday we'll find out in the next 10 minutes and the game is so similar to what they did against texas a&m a ranked opponent that they beat they used their defense sped texas a&m up and texas a&m is a very deliberate systematic offensive team lsu sped them up got them a little out of sorts out of comfort and they were able to pull out the win Field at the first couple of possessions of this fourth quarter for LSU are really important. Pointer and a call for a double dribble. Wow. Well, they may be important, but that one didn't go well for Pointer and LSU. Looks like she's mystified by the call. I like the attack by Kayla Pointer. Did her hand touch it? Maybe right there they thought she touched it. It's hard to see on the screen. Inside to Boston, surveying, looking at the double team, lays that off the iron and missed that, came up a little bit short. You mentioned during the halftime break about slowing down, and Boston has, that wasn't an easy shot. Afu is a pretty good defender, but she usually makes that left-handed shot up in close. It, yeah, that's, that's a shot that she definitely can make. She's missed a few on that left side. LSU just speeds you up, but I love the play call. Go right to Aaliyah Boston, little cross, cross screen, give her space, but hats off to Faustina Fua. She held her ground against Boston and then got a block here. Boy, that was a little bit dangerous. Step back jumper not there. Nice rebound in traffic by Afua. Again, playing with three personal fouls. That could be a big factor down the stretch. Nice pass. Pointer again, who averages five assists per contest, finding Trazi. Now 
Lily Grissett, number 24, on the floor now. The senior out of Durham, North Carolina, to start this fourth quarter. Boston, 15-footer, easy as can be now with 15. Ten rebounds, once again, another double-double for Aaliyah Boston. Such a dominant player. That smooth shot, un in composed, under control, shoot it up and in. That's what South Carolina needs. Pointer splits the double team and looking for a Fua that time. It did not work, but previously an absolutely beautiful example of sharing the ball. Well, right here, look, so she gets Lili Grissett with the behind the back, and then Lili Grissett closes out so hard, Kayla Pointer uses her energy against her, goes by her and finds Awatrazi. Very nice job at changing speeds from Kayla Pointer. Jumper on the way and buried by Destiny Henderson, who, like Kayla Pointer, has gotten very hot here in the third and fourth quarter. Paul, the stars are coming out to play. <laughs> we are seeing elevated play in the second half. Destiny Henderson, Bree Beal, Kayla Pointer. This one's fun. Pointer's going to remember that one once again, each and every possession. Streaking again up off the window, and it'll be free throws coming to Henderson, who now has 12 points on 5 of 10 shooting from the floor. This is what I'm talking about with Destiny Henderson. It does not matter how many players are in front of her. She is pushing, putting pressure on the defense, and looking to score in transition. Prazi picked up her fourth personal foul. Pointer will go to the sideline, but probably not for long. Yeah, Henderson is kind of a, she is so fast from end to end with the ball in her hand. She's almost like a one-woman fast break. Again, South Carolina has struggled a bit from the free throw line. They are now 9-18 on the season. South Carolina, 15 makes. They average a 63 percenter as a group. And both free throws up and good for Henderson. 7 nothing run for South Carolina as they quickly go back on top. 50-47. to 47. I'll get back to the question. First couple of minutes of this fourth quarter, first handful of possessions clearly favor South Carolina. Have they put LSU on their heels? Well, they've locked in on the defensive end a little bit better, and then they are really going to and through Aaliyah Boston. There's that defense right there. Yeah, forcing the turnover, laid up and in. Basket by Lili Grissett, and LSU needs a timeout, and they take it. They led 45-43 at the break, but now South Carolina has turned that into a five-point advantage. And when you need a turnover, who do you go to? Bree Beal gets the turnover, passes it right on time to Grissett for two. South Carolina on a 9-2 run to open the fourth quarter, also shooting 58% so far here in the second half to take the lead after trailing. At the break, 25-23, back with Andrea Carter. I'm Paul Sunderland. Let's take a look, Andrea, at some of the storylines around the SEC, and there are lots of them. First and foremost, seven teams in the last AP Top 25 poll. Seven teams, Charlie Cream, eight teams in the NCAA tournament with bids from the SEC, and then a big game today in between Kentucky and Tennessee. Just exciting. That's SEC basketball. Alabama got votes in the AP Top 25. If LSU were to pull off a win today, they could, you know, possibly get into the Top 25. I mean, it's just, it's so competitive in the SEC. What did you call it last week? The WNBA South? <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. That's not, that that's not bad. Yeah, Coach yeah, Yo yeah, over right, at Ole exactly. Miss says the yeah, SEC. That's not, not bad. That just uh, gives you an indication of the uh, talent level that's coming out of the SEC each and every year. And last year, Ty Harris won the Don Staley Award. How about that? What a unique honor to win that Don Staley Award, the number one point guard in the country. Then was the seventh pick overall by Dallas, the all-time assist leader at South Carolina with 702 dimes. You know, South Carolina, I mean, they definitely, when you think about the WNBA, they've left a mark on the WNBA. Kiki Herbert here again drafted to Minnesota, and it's not it's not getting to the NBA, but the South Carolina players these last few years, they've stayed in the WNBA and really kind of got a solid place on their team, which is really hard to do. Let alone Asia Wilson, three times the SEC Player of the Year and the number one overall draft pick by Las Vegas a couple of years ago. And what an honor on Monday when South Carolina was playing Arkansas in Columbia and her statue was unveiled. Uh, just uh, an emotional moment and an incredible honor 
for one of the best players in college basketball, certainly over the last decade, led South Carolina to that 2017 NCAA title. Such an incredible, incredible story and moment. I get chills and emotional every time I watch Asia Wilson talking about her grandmother and the statue and just, she is such a great story and such an amazing influence for women. Step through by Boston, not there. LSU looking for Trozzi, playing with those four personal fouls. One dribble, LSU needs a basket. 6.40 remaining here in the fourth, and they'll try to take advantage of this turnover. Young, who had a big first half, wearing number two in white with double figures. Ten points, been very quiet here in the second. Pointer trying to find some room and draws that foul. It's either on number one, Zaya Cook, or on Boston, number four. But Pointer will be going to the free throw line. I have a great Asia Wilson story. A couple of years ago, I did a game with her at Vanderbilt, and she asked me for a ride to the airport. So I drove to the rental car, and then we were kind of riding to the terminal. And she said, no, Paula, I, I, I'm, I'm going over there where the private jets take off. <laughs> she, so I got, I got on my plane and sat in the back, and, and Asia, Asia flew home on her private jet. I thought Come on, that Paul, was, you should have known. I, we should have known that one. I, I, I thought that was totally appropriate. It's just, it's amazing. I, I feel like she is so deserving of everything that she's, you know, just gotten and received and the recognition is the person she is, the way she loves on the fans and the way she plays the game, just such a huge, huge just influence on women's basketball, women in sports, just, you can look to Asia Wilson for anything. Yeah, really, look, I don't know her the way you do, but I really enjoyed the times that we have spent together when you do a game. Kind of get to know somebody a little bit, particularly when we were able to travel. Yeah, she was just uh, just an amazing player and getting better all the time. And maybe she's going to play for Don Staley in Tokyo at the Olympic Games. Boston with the basket in close. Boston now with 15 to go along with 12 rebounds. It's a nice perimeter defense by Brie Beal. I know I talk about it a lot, but it's hard to defend on the perimeter and keep space close, but someone has to do that against Kayla Pointer. Just put Brie Beal on Kayla Pointer because she's hot. She's flowing right now. Remember, only had three points in the opening half. Pointer now with 16. She's been really solid on the season. She's hit her average now, but over the last four, 22 points per game over the last four at 17 against AM. and What she's done a really nice job is going to the opposite side of the basket. When you do that as a guard, the rim kind of becomes a protector for you to avoid the block shot. Off the turnover, Carly C, a much needed basket, and Don Staley. <laughs> Very worried once again. When you're as good as South Carolina, you get the best every team you play has to offer. LSU's done a better job this half as well, converting turnovers into points. They forced 14 turnovers. They scored 14 points off turnovers. That's what they want. Zia Cook found some room down the middle of that zone over the sideline of the LSU basketball when we come back. We'll step aside. A good one as we thought. Mickey Fargus on the sideline for LSU trailing by one. Peter, exactly right. We wanted to start things off on this Sunday in college basketball in SEC on a very, very high note. A good basketball game. We've got that exactly. Mickey Fargus looking for her 31st win over a ranked opponent now in her 10th season at LSU trailing by only one. And Kayla Pointer. Ten baskets for LSU in the second half, Andrea. She's had a, she's either scored or had a hand in eight of them. Completely turned it on in the second half against one of the best, one of the longest, one of the most physical defensive teams in the country. And Don Staley said coming into this game about Kayla Pointer, we can't let her score and pass. Maybe she's exactly. going to score, maybe she's going to pass, but in the second half, she's been able to do both. She's scoring, she's finding her teammates and setting them up to score as well. Don Staley probably wouldn't want to admit it this minute, but when she looks at this film, she'll say, hey, wait a minute. 
That's an awfully good player. Don Staley will appreciate the performance on this afternoon by number oh, three in white, Kayla Pointer. Oh, yeah, I think Don Staley knows, too, and that's why there's such an emphasis on trying to limit at least one thing that she does well. But for LSU, if they want to pull out a win, they have to take care of the basketball, and they have to stop South Carolina in transition. South Carolina cannot get easy layups. Pointer now with 16, 13 of those coming in the second half. Afua loses the handle momentarily. The ball ping-pongs around. The officials look at one another, and it'll be LSU basketball with eight to shoot. Love the effort. Ooh. Both players, Zai Cook, Faustina Fua, great effort. Did it go? I thought that went off of Carly C, but I thought, well, what happened, I think, it went off of C into the official who's in play and then back off of South Carolina. Wow, luck, lucky play, lucky play for LSU. Pointer, long three-pointer on the way, rattles out. The rebound taken by Beal. Boy, quickly, Lily Grissett right at the rim. And that's what I'm talking about. And I think the three-pointer by Kayla Pointer, that's one that she can get at any time. Sometimes a shot that your teammates aren't expecting, it puts you in a bad position for transition defense. Lifetime left in this game. South Carolina with a three-point advantage. Young still looking to get it going here in the second half after having 10. That's her first basket in the second half. LSU trails by one. Boy, look how fast South Carolina is going. Boy, I better not look at the stats monitor. I'm going to miss something. Transition defense. Set it coming into the game after the break. Transition defense for LSU. That's too easy for South Carolina. Tierra Young, you score, but she fell down, and South Carolina's off to the races. In traffic, Boston had the ball momentarily, but ruled that it did, in fact, go off number four in black. So it'll be LSU basketball with 20 to shoot. Oh, that's a foul over the top. Faustino Fua got a big piece right of the back of the head of Boston. South Carolina switching up their defense, going into a zone. Yeah. Can't let Kayla Pointer get comfortable. She's done a nice job at getting into the paint, so South Carolina going zone to stop it. Again, another break for LSU. Shot clock was winding down on the kick ball. That gave him 20, and uh, Young didn't need any of that. And Lily Grissett, look at the energy that she has shown. Wow, running the floor, and a timeout is called. LSU's got to make an adjustment. That is three, if not four, quick, fast break opportunities. Lily Grissett, in particular, to give uh, South Carolina the lead. Well, Don Staley said that her bench needs to be better after the Georgia game, and Lily Grissett has done such a nice job in the critical moments of the game in the fourth quarter, getting her energy down the floor and scoring, making plays in transition. Huge baskets by Grissett along with a couple of her teammates. And look at this uh, discrepancy. Fast break points. You'd expect South Carolina, given style and pace of play, to have more. How about 23 to 6? And a lot of those coming here in the fourth quarter. Difference in the game right now. It's, it's hard because South Carolina, they push off of makes, they push off of misses, they create turnovers, just that transition. They've done a really nice job all season at scoring and playing fast. Yeah, but on the other side, LSU's got to make some kind of adjustment here in terms of how many players they're getting back, maybe a little more conservative on the offensive glass. Young trying to go against Boston and bangs it up and in, back-to-back. -back. Big baskets now for Tierra Young. Foul on the perimeter. Working on Henderson. That last score by Tierra Young, just a really nice, it's so hard to score on a player like Aaliyah Boston, but she hesitates, uses her speed, stops on a dime. That little shot fake gave her space. Young now with 14, Pointer leading the way with 16. Hey, 
In spite of the little mini run for South Carolina, LSU right there. Boston puts it on the floor, and as smooth as can be, nails the 13-foot jump shot. LSU needs player movement and ball movement. They need to really look to attack this zone. A foot, well, there, it just wasn't there. Not enough space and way too many hands in length. Going quickly at the other end. Cook lays it up and in. More fast break points. This is the largest lead now for either team at 64 to 57. And it happened, Dre, in the bat of an eye. Because of the transition offense of South Carolina, whether it's been a turnover, a made shot, a missed shot, South Carolina has been able to separate so far in these last four minutes, almost every possession, they're scoring in transition. There still is time for LSU looking for what would be a big upset. South Carolina on an 8-2 run with a minute 40 left in this one. South Carolina at 11 and 1. Undefeated in conference. A fool at the front of the rim can't get that to go. And here come numbers again. Cook again at the other end and called for an offensive foul. Jalen Cherry getting back to take the hit. Jalen Cherry has sacrificed her body. I think three times in today's game, taking charges, stopping her feet, setting up. Zaya Cook's got a move. She can do a, a pro hop there, go by. That's a tough call. Charger block. That's tough. I don't <laughs> exactly. ref for a reason. I don't ref for a reason. Uh, yeah, well, I thought that was a block. I didn't think she was there in time. Look at this. Just running out once again. Lily Grissett, I don't think that she is, to use a very old term, cherry picking. She's just outrunning everybody at the Maravich Center. Lily Grissett doing all of this damage. She started the fourth quarter, now has eight points in a total of, well, she played a total of 16 minutes, a little bit in the first half. Love the way she came out and is really making an impact, even scoring in transition, but there's been a couple she found Zaya Cook instead for the layup for transition. Just she has been the difference in these last four minutes because of her runouts. She's scoring and she's making layups. We talked to Don Staley about how Lily Grissett has to make layups and she's put a focus on it in practice at finishing at the rim. And she's been able to do it tonight and her team has needed it. Really, really nice job with Lily Grissett. I don't think she's missed a layup in these last four minutes. She's finished all of them. South Carolina has made their last six field goal attempts to take now again the largest lead. The differential 32 percent. Don Staley's team, the Gamecocks in the first half, 62 in the second. And a big part of that has been Lily Grissett along with Aaliyah Boston. LSU's got to go. They probably need a three. Right, down by three possessions. Can't take this kind of time. That's going to be off the mark. Maybe needs a bounce. Battle for it. Offensive rebound taken by Afua. Drea, LSU style gave them a chance to pull off the big upset. But their style also doesn't work against them when they're the ones having to make a comeback at times because they have a hard time pushing. I mean, you see what South Carolina can do in transition and they look to score and there's no hesitation in attacking. For LSU, they have to think a little bit more. Do they attack? They only attack in transition when they have numbers. So when they don't have numbers, they have to slow it down and execute. And in a game like this, when you're down a few possessions, you have to be able to get it up the floor and score quickly. Afua's had her hands full all afternoon long trying to guard not only Aaliyah Boston but the rest of the front court. Afua now has seven. Pointer with 16. Young with 14. Trazi with nine. On the other side, Boston 19 points, 14 rebounds, a handful of block shots as well for the reigning SEC Defensive Player of the Year. Aaliyah Boston, let's take a look at what she's done in the second 20 minutes. I mean, I just have really enjoyed the way that she scores in space, makes the right reads. So if the defense isn't on her, she's shooting it. If the defense is on her, she's making a move. And even right here, patience, a one dribble pull up in the middle of the paint. And Faustina Fu and Awatrazi have been very physical with the Leah Boston, and she's welcomed it. Hasn't lost her composure, just played strong. 
but she makes the smart play. She beats you with her size, but she beats you with the way that she thinks and reads the game. Yeah, incredibly intelligent player and, and has wonderful instincts for the game of basketball. And for the second game in a row, she's got a double-double just in a half. She's got 10 points, 10 rebounds in the second half this afternoon in Baton Rouge. And remember, against Georgia, she had 11 points, 11 rebounds in the first half against the Bulldogs in that win. So LSU going to fall to 4-3 and three in conference, 6-7 and seven overall. South Carolina will improve to 12-1, and 7-0 in the SEC. But LSU give them a lot of credit, except for Lily Grissett, with some help from Destiny Henderson, Zaya Cook. Tremendous work in the fourth quarter to finally put this team away. Trazi has fouled out. Free throw needs to rattle down, and it does not. There's always comparisons made. Aaliyah Boston over her first 45 games compared. I'd like to be compared to Asia Wilson. I would like to have to live with that, but I think this young woman is very, very comfortable, and those numbers are very similar. And, you know, just she a handles tremendous it. start to her career. Yeah, yeah. She handles it so well, Paul, when you think about being compared to one of the greatest of all time. And she was asked after the Georgia game, and she, of course, gives Azer Wilson so much credit and speaks so highly of her. And she also just said, I'm just focused on being Aaliyah and, and doing what she does and being the best that she can. And it shows in the way that she plays. Let's take a look at South Carolina's upcoming schedule currently at number four. They're going to get their 12th win today. And the SEC Conference, as we told you, seven ranked teams, Alabama receiving votes. One of those ranked teams, Mississippi State. They're currently at number 19, Alabama then at Auburn, and then notably one at UConn. Tennessee and UConn, pretty good ga game. Your, your, old, your alma mater gave uh, the Huskies all they wanted until Paige Beckers hit that big three right in the last couple of seconds to seal the deal for UConn. Yeah, Tennessee, they hung tough turnovers, and they went on a little scoring lull in that fourth quarter, and UConn definitely closed out the game better. I was impressed by the way Tennessee played. I'm really looking forward to the UConn-South Carolina matchup. UConn. They had a hard time scoring over Tennessee's length. I think South Carolina's length will be a problem. I know home court isn't nearly what it we hope it would be once because of COVID precautions, but that game is in stores, I believe. Isn't it at UConn? Mm, I'm not sure. Yeah, at UConn. Yeah, I, I thought so. I thought so. We, we just saw the grass. It probably said at UConn on it. I <laughs> Well, in the end, what matters is that you finish what you started, and LSU give them a lot of credit. Will this game give LSU confidence playing the number four team in the country like this? The way they play, they can beat at maybe every other team in the league. They've already beaten A&M. They gave uh, South Carolina everything they wanted. South Carolina, wonderful closing quarter. But uh, Nikki Fargus and her LSU Tigers have uh, done an awfully, awfully good job making this a competitive game. They led it 25-23 and then 45-43 going into the fourth quarter. Paul Sunderland back with you from Southern California. My partner, Drea Carter, out in Charlotte. We thought it would be a good one. This has been a really fun college basketball game. Defensive, the coaches making uh, adjustments. Your thoughts so far on what you've seen from both? Well, I mean, you said it. I think the defense has been so fun to watch for LSU. Their effort, especially in those first three quarters, even in the first half of the fourth quarter, and they've just played so hard. But South Carolina, I've been really impressed. In a game where things are not going their way on the offensive end, they kept playing, kept fighting, kept the game just close enough. And then in the fourth quarter, what do they do? They go to exactly what they do best. They run the floor, find each other in transition, and capitalize on those moments. So definitely impressed by both teams, LSU and their effort and the way that they played. But South Carolina, 
the way they just stuck to what they knew, went through Aaliyah Boston and scored in transition to kind of separate in that fourth quarter. And talk about separating. It was a one-point game with four minutes left, and then Lily Grissett and Aaliyah Boston go on a run 13-5 to five, to have some comfortable celebration, <laughs> separation leading up to the celebration as they close this out with under half a minute to play. And with the way that South Carolina shoots free throws, you know, for if you're LSU, you still kind of think, hey, we we still got a shot here. Seven point game. Maybe we foul right here. They need to score quickly. 13 of 23. Good point, Dre. South Carolina has really struggled from the free throw line. They're 63 percent on the year. Got to go quick. Young has no time for this. Oh, nice play defensively. Zaya Cook getting in the passing lane and will get to the free throw line as time is winding down. Turnovers. Turnovers really hurt LSU in this last quarter. South Carolina has been able to get a couple of baskets off of steals or draw fouls and love the push. Good composure by Zaya Cook in transition. Points off turnovers are fairly close, but clearly what Lily Grissett, among others, have done, Zaya Cook here, it has been a difference in the fourth quarter. After struggling in the opening 20 minutes, South Carolina turned that completely around. Shot 32%, I mentioned it earlier, 62% from the floor in the second half, and a lot of those right at the rim by Grissett. Shot out of the corner by Jalen Cherry. The final score, 69-65. Your final thoughts, Dre? A close look at South Carolina, Don Staley's Gamecocks. Once again, impressive, particularly when it really mattered. Yeah, very impressed by LSU's effort. But South Carolina, they hung tough and they showed they can close out a game. 26 in a row against the best competition in all of college basketball. Aaliyah Boston with 20 points and 14 rebounds to lead the way. South Carolina wins it 69-65 for all of us here in Baton Rouge. Let's send it to Peter Burns.